Hello friends, in this lecture we will study about one very very important products from nutrition point of view uh, that is iron fortified rice. You know malnutrition is a major concern for young children and women nowadays and particularly the micronutrient malnutrition. The micronutrient malnutrition is because of the deficiency of various micronutrients but like uh, minerals and vitamins. About uh, more than 30 percent or over 2 billion of the world population is anemic mainly due to iron deficiency anemia. It is a WHO report. Iron deficiency anemia is becoming a major concern a serious problem in our country in India also. According to the latest government survey about 58 percent of children, 53 percent of women and around 22.7 percent or 23 percent of men are anemic in India. The Iron deficiency anemia is mainly because of the low levels of RBC in the blood. The IDA iron deficiency anemia depending upon the type of uh, the RBC or level of the RBC in the blood it can be divided into different categories like mild anemia, moderate anemia, severe anemia or any anemia. Any anemia where this uh, uh, iron content is less than or uh, RBC is less than 11, point, 11 gram per deciliter. You can see that it is in this picture, it is clearly shown that RBC, white B, WBC, and uh, platelets. So, RBC count in the normal blood is comparatively more whereas in the anemic blood RBC count is reduced. So, in fact this uh, iron uh, vitamin B12 and folic acid these three micronutrients have very important role in the formation of uh, blood or RBC that is the uh, iron causes the or helps has a role in formation of hemoglobin vitamin B12 has a role in the formation of RBC and folic acid results into a causes the multiplication and maturation of the red cells in our body. So, adequate supply of iron folic acid and vitamin B12 which is cyanocobalamin can cure this problem. Uh, different uh, IDA risk factors are shown in this figure that is uh, it may be demographic factors, it may be dietary factor, low intake of heme iron, low vitamin C intake or other components and even their sociological or physical social or physical factors. So, but in the nutshell ultimately the because of these various risk factors and various causes people do not get required amount of the iron content or uh, folic acid and vitamin B12 content. So, the generally women or pregnant women, women of uh, child bearing age, infants and children, people with poor diet or people who donate blood frequently or vegetarian people who does not replace meat with iron or iron rich food etcetera in their regular diet, they are normally the victims of iron deficiency anemia. And this anemia or particularly the iron deficiency anemia has major influences or major impacts on the health. It uh, adversely affects the cognitive performance and uh, behavior of the persons. It adversely affects the physical growth of infants preschool children and school children. 
it adversely affects the immune status and morbidity of infections of the all age group of the persons the physical activity and work performance of adolescents and adults of all age groups are also adversely affected by ida even uh, increased risk of hemorrhage sepsis maternal mortality and low birth weight etc are the other risk factors because of the ida so there is a the prevalence of anemia makes it necessary to develop sustainable strategies to alleviate this problem of iron deficiency anemia from the nations so the there are different strategies for the prevention of anemia this may be through dietary diversification that is we have our diet in regular diet daily diet in such a proportion in a balanced manner so that we get adequate uh, intake we take adequate intake of the required nutrients b12 folic acid and iron or we visit the doctor that is provide improved health services by taking iron capsules iron tablets etc or by having iron folic acid supplementation with by annual deworming and another most effective is uh, now that considered it with the uh, food fortification so either, either of these strategies alone or in combination in fact combination of the different strategies may be an effective solution for the formation of iron deficiency anemia so with this thing in background this iron fortified rice has been developed so i will tell you what are the uh, why this rice is an important vehicle for iron fortification because rice is a stable food in most of the countries worldwide more than 3 billion people eat rice milled rice is a good source of energy it is a poor source of micronutrient because most of the this uh, micronutrients like iron zinc thiamine niacin vitamin b6 etc which are present in the rice in the paddy they are present in the bran layer right so during milling that is when the bran is removed in the polished rice that is almost all micronutrient are removed so the milled raw rice is basically a starch uh, grain it is a starch endosperm which we normally eat so in this uh, figure you can see bar chart that is the micronutrient content of white rice brown rice parboiled rice and fortified rice that is during parboiling method some of the micronutrient in diffuse into the kernel starchy endosperm so the parboiled rice has little more uh, this uh, their levels in uh, in comparison to the raw rice or raw milled rice by fortification that is the elo picture this that is one can have in infused in the rice the desired amount of micronutrients so the rice fortification with different micronutrients can become an effective solution for micronutrient deficiencies so different means that is in the fortification of rice the different micronutrient that is different compounds of rice can be used or incorporated in and the rice i will tell you little later what are the method of fortification and incorporation of this so accordingly this iron fortified rice can be manufactured so different uh, iron fortificants or compounds of iron which can be which has the potential to be used uh, as a fortificant include iron pyrophosphate ferrous sulfate iron ethylidine diamine tetra acetic acid sodium salt or ferrous fumarate or elemental iron and all these they have their particular characteristic like ferric pyrophosphate it is water insoluble sorry the ferric pyrophosphate is water insoluble 
and has poor solubility in dilute acid. It is naturally white or half white, it has low solubility at the normal pH of the rice. Even in the interaction with the rice components and other nutrients in the grain is low and it has minimum effect on color as well as smell. Whereas the ferrous sulphate is water soluble, it has effect on color and impart metallic taste. So, these are the different uh, the means uh, fortificants depending upon their characteristics that is the fortificant level should be selected that uh, it should not have any interaction with the uh, constituent of the food, it should not impart any undesirable color and flavor etcetera. Like for example, if hair of sulphate is used in the fortification, it is a water soluble. So, chances will be there that much of uh, this ferrous sulphate will be washed away or leached out. So, the ferric pyrophosphate is one such because it is water insoluble. So, chances of its retention in the rice during cooking and during washing operations is more. In the earlier class, we discussed uh, in detail about the fortificants, their selection criteria, etcetera. So, among these fortificants, one can find out most commonly used fortificant for rice is the ferric pyrophosphate. So, the technologies are method for fortification, the common methods include uh, dusting, coating and extrusion. In the coating and dusting, the chances of uh, losses of these nutrients that is Fe, uh, Fe, B12 and folic acid etcetera, they are more during washing or during cooking. But the extrusion, because in the extrusion technology, that the micronutrient are infused inside the kernel, whereas by coating and dusting processes that is the micronutrients are present on the surface of the rice grain. So, extrusion uh, appears to be most promising technology for rice fortification. The dusting, as I told you during dusting micronutrients in the form of fine particles are blended with the bulk rice and this method makes use of the electrostatic forces between the rice surface and the micronutrients. So, the rice uh, micronutrients are coated or dusted on the, the stick on the surface. So, disadvantage of this method is that washing and are cooking in excess water that is then drained lead its significant losses or in the countries where intensive rice washing is practiced during cooking etcetera, dusting is not a recommended method for fortification. Coating, in this method high concentration of micronutrients are added to the rice followed by water resistance edible coating. Several coating layers usually alternated with layers of coating material alone are added by spraying in the co coating it will coating we studied the different methods. So, by spray coating this uh, micronutrient layer is put on the surface of the rice coating may include even coating material like waxes, some acid, gums, starches or cellulogic polymers etcetera may be used as a carrier for this micronutrients for the coating. Disadvantages of these technology, coating technology include that it, it results in loss of color, taste and micronutrient uh, during washing step. Majority of the water soluble micronutrients are lost during washing because in this also the micronutrients are present on the surface only and the coating layer of the kernel makes them highly visible in the rice blend. So, the color of the rice also gets somewhat uh, affected. So, the extrusion technology as I told you it is it is one of the promising technology for uh, fortification of uh, uh, rice with the micronutrients okay, and different unit operations which during the extrusion processing of fortified rice kernel include that rice is to be converted into powder, then powder is mixed with uh, additives and premixes etcetera, then dry mixing then final 
it is a condition to suitable washer content and after conditioning it is passed through that is the dough formation shaping stabilizing drying so this dough formation and shaping takes place inside the extruder barrel and then finally rice comes it is dried and then we get a rice kernel of suitable so both cold or warm or hot extrusion can be applied to produce reconstituted rice kernels sometimes these uh, rice kernel fortified rice kernels are also called as rice analogs or simply extruded rice kernel or fortified rice kernel frk so ingredients for this process include rice flour of different granulation and this is very very important that is the particle size of the rice flour and vitamin and mineral premix optional additives may be binders moisture barrier agents or emulsifier and water and or steam so but the binders moisture barrier agents etc are optional the main uh, ingredients becomes rice flour of uh, uh, particularly of uh, micronized form lower particle size similarly vitamins and mineral premix of uh, lower particle size because micronized vitamin and mineral premixes the in that the bioavailability of iron is very very high so the in the mixing and conditioning step that is it ensures uniform mixing of rice flour with uh, vitamin and mineral premix and better results can be obtained when the particle size as i told you of the ingredients are smaller micronized the hydrated mixture is then fed to the extruder where it is mixed kneaded seared and produced in a paste like mixture inside the extruder barrel and the conditions inside the barrel temperature and pressure in a accordingly adjusted so that the in the shaping process inside the barrel the appearance of the rice kernel and log should be like that of the natural rice so for this purpose this uh, material is moved that is uh, from the inside the barrel to outside through a specially designed die so a suitable die and a suitable cutter assembly they are very very important uh, component or constituents of this extrusion process so a rice shaped die is uh, used to give a shape and another thing that is the temperature and pressure at the die head that is the inside because inside the extruder generally temperature and pressure is high outside the extruder temperature and pressure is low that in the environment so a proper balance has to be made by adjusting the temperature and pressure inside the extruder extruder barrel so that the when material comes out it doesn't expands too much it gives a proper shape of the material rice shape material obtained so after that since in the conditioning process some the moisture was added just in order to facilitate a proper formation of the of proper giving proper shape to the material so some of the moisture content and when this uh, rice or fortified kernel comes out of the dryer it has come little higher moisture content so to make it stable at room temperature it has to be dried and its moisture content in fact should be brought to the range of that of the normal moisture content so maybe either uh, any type of dryer like fluidized bed dryer tray dryer conveyor belt type dryer tumble dryer or rotating cylindrical drum dryer etc can be used in fact the fluidized bed dryer may be appear to be a good uh, dryer or for the large scale online manufacturer uh, that continuous production conveyor belt type dryer and also we will be more appropriate suitable so this in this slide just i have try to give you the effect of because as i told you the effect of extrusion process parameter whether it is a cold extrusion or it is a warm extrusion or hot extrusion depending upon the product temperature that is cold extrusion 30 to 40 degree celsius in warm extrusion the temperature is 60 to 90 degree celsius in hot extrusion it may be 
80 to 110 degrees Celsius, the product temperature. So, depending upon uh, the temperature of the material inside the extruder barrel, there might be different uh, changes. It influences the characteristics of the. So, since this rice paste inside it is basically starch, so starch gelatinization becomes important characteristics. So, in the cold extrusion, gelatinization is not there, it is almost nil. In the warm extrusion, there will be partial gelatinization like 65 to 75 percent, and in the hot extrusion, high degree of gelatinization 65 to 85 percent may be there. So, that is a, the machinery used for cold extrusion may be pasta press, warm extrusion, pasta press or extruder or for hot extrusion single or twin screw extruder and this single or twin screw extruder hot extrusion gives a translucent the product with a smooth surface. So, that becomes that extruder selection, extruder process parameter selections becomes an important uh, concern, important matter that is for giving for obtaining a proper size product. So, the starch gelatinization is again an important aspect which influences the cooking characteristics or other characteristics of the fortified kernels. That is in the cooking section of the extruder, the dough is subjected to extrusion temperatures effective to substantially gelatinize the starch molecules and denature the protein. In the case of rice analogs, gelatinization of starch as I told you is very, very important because it affects the quality in terms of both physicochemical, cooking, textural as well as structural properties. So, the critical parameters that directly influence the gelatinization and final product quality are moisture content, mechanical energy input, thermal energy input and the residence time that is retention time in, in the extruder barrel. So, in this slide I have just tried to give you a, the process technology which we have developed in our laboratory. In fact, we have worked on uh, extruder uh, fortified rice kernel using extruder technology. right? So, one of the unique features of our technology include that we take uh, we use broken rice. In fact, in the milling during milling processes that uh, on an average 10 to 12 percent of the rice gets broken and which the rice millers have to sell at uh, lower prices because it doesn't, the broken rice does not set good price in the market. So, what we have done? We have taken these broken rice ground them into fine powder all right and this powder is added with the vitamin and mineral premix conditioned as i told you earlier that process technology so but here the particle size of the uh, both micronutrients and the rice flour as well as moisture content and the proper giving proper time for or uniform mixing of all this is very, very important. So, mixing and conditioning is done and then this mixed and conditioned that is a floor rice powder is fed to the extruder and I already told you that it is passed through inside the extruder the conditions are proper required conditions are maintained, the material is passed through a proper dye. I will show you we have designed three types of dye depending upon the size of the three long uh, rice grain, medium rice grain and small rice grain for all these uh, producing rice of all these three sizes. We have uh, designed the dye and also we have developed a pilot scale facility that I will show you the, in the next slide. So, the micronutrient which we use for fortification in this is as per the FSSAI food safety and standards authority of India guidelines and as for them I told showed you in the last class that is the different items in the rice they recommend that iron should have 280 to 425 milligram per 100 gram uh, that iron it should have 750 to 1250 microgram per 100 gram folic acid and 7.5 to 12.5 the 
microgram per 100 gram vitamin B12. So, accordingly we are adding the rice, the, we are fortifying the rice as per the FSSA guidelines and this is the pilot plant facility that is the equipment required for the production of uh, iron fortified rice is starting from the grinding of the broken rice that is micropulverizer, then blender and conditioner, twin screw extruder, then uh, we use a tray dryer in our process, so tray dryer and then rice polisher. It is just to the extruded rice which comes, the rice FRK fortified rice kernel which comes out of the extruder, it is given a surface finish, a smoothening. So, to its appearance is better and then uh, that is the fortified rice kernel and normal rice mixture and finally, the packaging machine. So, this are uh, equipment we have installed a pilot scale unit where we can produce 100 kg of fortified rice kernel per day and this all this uh, machinery required for this are this uh, fabricated indigenously in the country. Then these are the pictures of the fortified rice kernels which we have uh, produced through our uh, that is both raw as well as cooked rice. You can see here it is a raw rice picture, this is one is cooked rice and these two, these are the uncooked FRK that is fortified rice kernel which comes out of the extruder and this is there are two types of uh, fortification we have done in one case only iron is added to, uh, to tune up 800 milligram per 100 gram of the rice and in the FRK2 uh, it is as per the FSSI guidelines. So, and after cooking the pictures that is the rye rice cooks after cooking looks like this and you can see here that is even this fortified rice kernel also. So, they have the all the physicochemical characteristics, textural characteristics, cooking characteristics or sensory characteristics of these fortified rice kernels are quite similar. They resemble very well with the, those of the normal rice. These are the both long, medium and small rice kernels produced by the through the extruder and both cooked and uncooked. In the upper part these pictures are uncooked and in the lower part the cooked uh, rice pictures produced in the pilot plant using the different dyes, three different dyes that is long, medium and small. So, the uh, in the extrusion process the added nutrients are embedded in the kernel matrix. I told you because this nutrient micronutrient are mixed with the floor, they, they are largely unaffected by post processing treatment such as transport, storage, washing, cooking, during cooking etcetera. The losses of the micron we have conducted all these aspects extensively thoroughly in our laboratory and found there are almost nil or insignificant very very least. Uh, less significant changes in the micronutrient post processing. Our structure of the recomposed rice kernels is significantly different from the natural rice kernel. You can see here these are the micro structure of the natural rice and this is the micro structure of the fortified rice kernels. So, extrusion cooking may be because the gelatinization is occurring and this uh, protein is getting denatured. So, the starch and protein structure are drastically changed. So, FRK has a compact and hard structure as compared to the crystalline structure of the rice, normal rice. So, this uh, now the various uh, people, various workers, researchers have worked on that because it is very important to find out that uh, the iron folic acid etcetera which is added to the rice, what is its bioavailability and how actually it is helping or working inside the system when we consume this iron fortified rice, how it is helping to improve iron stores in our blood etcetera. So, in different countries different uh, researchers have worked on that all this data is uh, given in these tables around those studies and mo almost all these studies they have confirmed they provide a strong evidence that the fortification process was found effective in controlling or improving the iron stores. So, then 
another important aspect is the production supply and distribution of iron fortified rice that is the for the production like uh, this iron fortified rice you take that the brokens etc using in the extruder facility it has be to be produced this is a pictorial distribution i have given that is starting from the spidey you get uh, spidey milling in the rice mill and then the brokens are obtained these brokens may be in the fortified in the frk manufacturing unit they can be manufactured and then finally these uh, frk uh, may be either it may be two channels may be followed that is either it can be blended with the rice normally it is recommended that is in the frk which is produced in the through the extrusion technology it is given uh, maybe 100 times more in micronutrients are added so finally this uh, uh, fortified rice kernel they are mixed or blended with normal rice natural rice in the proportion of 1 to 100 and just to reduce the cost so blending becomes an important steps issue so there are different strategies for this blending and uh, this distribution to the consumer to the government agencies that is in one way it can be directly through market agency directly supply to the consumers or in other channel through government agencies at government distribution agencies it can be taken up to the people those who are needy the consumers so this is the regarding the blending blending of the iron fortified rice kernels with the natural rice batch mixing may be there in the continuous mixing is there that is in the batch mixing obviously that is the fortified rice kernel is made separately milled rice is obtained separately from the rice mill etc they are weighed in proper proportion then they are fed to the blender mixer and get fortified rice that is a forti iron fortified rice means which has both a mixture of blend of fortified rice kernel and natural rice so it is packaged in the continuous mixing obviously that is both that is the fortified rice production unit and then milled rice from the rice mill they can be both connected that is blender to connected by appropriate conveying lines metering and conveying lines can be there and then continuously this can be fed to the blender the blender may be also a screw conveyor blender type the material which gives fortified rice and it is packaged so the iron fortified rice supply chain models will be different that is in the consolidated supply scenario that is there are three four scenarios might be there and um, now it is depending upon the governmental programs depending upon a the uh, which suits to the one or the other country or one or the other nations for one or the other particular program they can uh, take up any scenario so in scenario 1 that is in a, a consolidated supply scenario with large mills having high individual production volumes fortified kernels production and the blending can occur at the rice milling facility itself and where this uh, fortified rice kernel is coming rice is coming and then through continuous online etc so it can be a continuous production of iron fortified rice and including even packaging but here the capital investment cost may be high and maybe that even usability that is the because it is only one it is mixed blended into 1 is to 100 proportion so use efficiency of the fortified rice kernel manufacturing unit may not match with the rice mill so in the scenario 2 medium and large size rice mills can incorporate blending facility easily they can source frk and blend at the specified ratio with non fortified rice means that is the uh, they can have a blender blending unit incorporated in this rice frk manufacturing can be done at uh, some other location and the frk can come uh, they can procure the frk and then do the blending job in third scenario there is blending also can be done at some other places that is at a storage warehouses mainly in, in the there are different agencies which try to store 
uh, rice for public distribution uh, etc. So, in those storage of our houses that uh, blending unit can be installed. So, the rice comes from the rice mill is stored there, the FRK can be produced somewhere, the FRK can come also. So, in those warehouses only the blending is done and then packaging is done. In the scenario 4, the consolidated rice can be blended with fortified kernel at a consolidation point in the supply chain. For example, if rice from mini rice mill is consolidated at a wholesaler or trader then the fortified kernels can be blended with the non-fortified rice before the rice is transported to the retailers. So, in this case it is that a big trader that is a who collects the rice from different warses and then sends to the different retailing uh, retailers etcetera. So, they, the blending unit can be put in those places and so either of the which is true which can be workable either of these strategies can be used and the fortified rice kernel can be supplied to the people. So, but I would like to conclude this lecture talk by saying that this iron rice fortification is a very very important technology. It has lot of advantages and fortification of rice with micronutrients can provide a major breakthrough into nutrition and health improvement as well as in tackling the problem of malnutrition. Iron fortified rice has a great potential to eradicate the problem of iron deficiency anemia from the nations. Fortification using extrusion offers benefits of utilization of the broken rice. So, it becomes a sort of value addition that is a, it a provides a value addition and therefore, providing economic profit both to the rice millers as well as the to the consumers or to the farmers. So, this becomes a very good technology for the nutrition and health improvement programs. Thank you for your present hearing. Thank you very much.